Papatipu Runanga are our representative bodies of our Fano and Hapu in particular places around the Ngaitahu Takiwa. So Ngaitahu enjoys the benefit and the curse of an enormous landscape. It's an area more than half the size of New Zealand, so there's enormous diversity within that landscape. You've got button birds to the south, you've got eels here, you've got ponemu on the west coast, you've got whales in Kaikoura, and these communities are established by different strands of the same family groups, but uh, have their own distinct whakapapa. We've got our own distinct facial features, uh, characteristics, we've got our own stories, and when you take those individual communities and bolt them together, you get a tribal oversight, which is carried through the Tirunanga or Ngaitau mechanism. The Runanga is the tribal voice of Ngaitahu. Without our history and our resource and our people, there would be no Ngaitahu Act. The Ngaitahu settlement was essentially the resolution of five to six generations of grievance taken by Ngaitahu to the Crown. Matiaha Tiramorehu took the first petitions to government in 1849, and over those successive generations, we saw petitions and claims taken before government. At the end of the day, we were looking at the future. That is why I lodged the claim, to fix up the sins of the past so that we can move forward. When Tipani and the Trust Board filed the claim, they also at the same time started a dialogue with NATO. Well, if we could develop our own structure, what would it look like? So we've gone along the route of what we call the Papati Purunanga, the, the beginning shoots, and loosely. It's based on the areas of occupation of NATO prior to the coming of the European. Each of those areas becomes an electorate, and the people of those regions elect a representative and an alternate to represent them on the tribal council. In Māori society, getting collective agreement or understanding around issues is an important way of securing that collective understanding, ensure that the, the rights and interests of, of all whānau and, and hapu members is, is taken into account. Some runanga are strong culturally and got good language skills and good at kapahaka and go there naturally. Some are pretty quick in the investment sense or very astute politically. Some are very natural resource focused. So we tend to reflect the space that we're in, where we've come from, where we are, what our environment is, our interests that have, that have formed us. And then of course we mix all that up by coming together. So our Papatipu Runanga in the context of resource management play a, a huge role in, um, in ensuring that our kaitiaki responsibilities uh, well discussed amongst the whānau, that we have an agreed position on what it is we want to do and we can advocate that or, um, or make other parties aware of what that position is. Environment Canterbury working with our Papati Purunanga on their natural resource arena. They're working with Tarunanga of Kaikoura on the restoration of a wetland on the Oaro River. We have Waihora of course with uh, Te Whakaora to Waihora and they've also been part of the process over Wairiwa. They're now looking at Wainono, so they're working in conjunction with all of our Papati Purunanga within the region. We're part of a community and if you want to have a, a wide approach at looking at sustainability, looking at kaitiakitanga, the best method is to do it with others. So a collaborative approach within our community, looking at the natural environment, just makes sense. We want the best in all aspects that we can possibly get for our people.